Okay, good afternoon. I'm Mackenzie Swinehart. I'm the Director of Grants and Community Engagement here at the Greater Columbus Arts Council. We're so glad you joined us for this workshop. Today we're going to be talking about Neighborhood Arts Connection Fellowship. And we're very excited to be continuing this fellowship. It's our third year in having this fellowship. Um, and we'll talk a lot about all the options. If at any time you have questions during this workshop, do feel free to raise your hand or put a message into chat and we'll be happy to answer it as we go. I'll also leave plenty of time at the end um, once we stop the recording to ask questions, stay on the line, um, and we'll help from there. So one thing we like to talk about at all of these workshops is how GCAC is funded, and you're going to see why in just a moment. So we have been receiving funding from multiple sources, but we're primarily publicly funded. In fact, all of our grants and fellowships um, are coming from public sources. So we have since the 70s been funded by the hotel motel tax, which is also known bed tax. Um, we, if you stay at a hotel in the city of Columbus um, limits, we get a percentage of that tax that's on there. Additionally, in 2018 and 2019, we went through an advocacy campaign to increase funding for our artists and arts organizations. So now there are two ticket fees um, programs that are added on to uh, tickets at venues of over 400 people or ticket prices of over $10 um, and that are at for-profit organizations, institutions here in the city. And then finally, um, as part of that advocacy campaign, we also now, starting in 2019, receive a direct allocation from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners that also help fund these programs. So those are the all the buckets of, of public dollars that are funding these programs, and it's going to be really relevant to this program in just a moment. So today, if we were in person, I'd be handing these out old school in, in paper uh, guidelines, but we're going to be on our website, gcc.org. We're going to be looking at the grant opportunities and guidelines section under grants, fellowships, and residencies. And we'll want to scroll down and look specifically at the Neighborhood Arts Connection Fellowship. This is um, the guidelines that we are going to be going through at a high level today, but this will also be your, your guidance as you go through the process. You can also find these guidelines in our application portal as well. All right, so now we're going to get into the meat of this um, fellowship program. So we always start with who is eligible to apply? We are looking for individual artists to apply. Um, it cannot be a nonprofit or a producer that is not an artist themselves. We're looking for folks who are producing creative artists that are working as an artist. You don't have to be full time, but you self identify as an artist. Um, we're looking for 18 years and older, so a legal adult. We, as all is true for all of our programs. You cannot be a degree seeking undergraduate student. That means if you are taking, you know, a class at Columbus State or something like that, you're very welcome to still apply. But if you're still working through your undergrad and getting a degree, um, you will not be eligible. Then finally, you for this program, and this is unique because this is not true in some of our programs, you must be a City of Columbus resident. We are using funding from those city sources that you may have seen back when we talked about how is GCC funded, and we are really looking to impact Columbus City neighborhoods. So you do have to be a Columbus resident for this program. And you must, for the project you propose, you must be proposing a project in the neighborhood which you live in. So talking about you being a Columbus City resident, you must propose a project that's happening or involving your specific neighborhood. So if I lived in the hilltop and I wanted to do a project in Linden, that would not be eligible. I would have to, because I have residency in the hilltop, I would have to be proposing a project for my direct neighborhood of residency of the hilltop. So that's it's pretty broad. Um, if you're if you've got that Columbus residency and you're you're a working artist, um, you're you're probably going to be in the who is eligible. Now, what is eligible? So we're looking for 
all kinds of projects, all kinds of neighborhood projects that could, might be a performance, it might be an exhibit, it might be a film screening or a reading, it might be a mini festival or some kind of pop-up, it might be a multidisciplinary event. Um, it can, you can let your mind wander, but there's a few important um, components of of this fellowship. One, we talked about it, it must be a city of Columbus neighborhood. So don't forget that many of our suburbs are not considered to be in the city of Columbus. So Gahanna, Whitehall, Westerville, Hilliard, Grandview, um, Upper Arlington, New Albany, Worthington, those are not actually city of Columbus neighborhoods. They are their own cities with their own city hall and government. Um, so they do have to be within the city of Columbus. Then the next thing is, just like all of our programs, we do expect the artists participating in this program are paid. Um, we know that um, not every budget allows for, you know, huge amounts of payment, but we do expect that you think about what is fair compensation for every artist involved, including yourself, if you're proposing, um, if you're going to be working as an artist in this um, project. So do you think about that, those fair wages to artists, what they're contributing to these projects, that we're not asking artists to donate their time, um, that we're providing, you know, stipends, supplies, et cetera, to the artists participating. Um, the All the artists that are participating do not have to live in your neighborhood, just the primary applicant does. However, we do really encourage you to tap the artists living in your neighborhood and make it a real um, community spirited event. Finally, the most important thing about the eligibility for Neighborhood Arts Connection Fellowship is that this project engages with your neighborhood, with the public, with your um, community, your direct community in some way. Um, we are not going to dictate how you have to engage with the community, but we want them to be more than spectators. So um, we're hoping that the engagement is deeper and richer than um, the the neighborhood is like attendees. So if I were putting on a music performance, I say the engagement is, oh, they come watch me perform. That wouldn't be very deep participation. So I will say those, uh, the applications that have been really successful in the past, think about creative ways to have the community participate. Um, it might be some kind of design process. If you're putting together a mural, how's the community getting involved? Is it um, a hands-on project? Are you, you know, maybe, um, incorporating neighborhood stories into your project? Are you doing, um, are you engaging with local businesses and local um, nonprofits? However you feel the most connected to your neighborhood and how the community can engage with this project um, is up to you. And uh, we want to let your project guide that creativity. However, just think about like, how is this really participatory? How are the folks who are coming um, going to participate in in this art ex experience? So it's pretty broad. Um, we're looking for your creativity to go. It does have to take place, whatever is the results of your project, the event or the publication or whatnot has to take place within your neighborhood. And here are a few things that we don't fund. Um, we cannot fund fundraising events. So if you're doing a benefit or a fundraiser or a charity event for another nonprofit, even if it's a wonderful nonprofit that exists in your neighborhood, that's not something we'll fund through this program. Um, we can't fund any past events. So this um, the the winners of these fellowships will be notified by November 1st. So it can't be a project that has taken place before November 1st. Maybe a little bit of the planning, like if you've been, you know, in the process of creating a project might have happened before then, but the public aspects of the project have to take place after November 1st. Um, we're looking for the project to be completed sometime in the next year. So we would like to see you finish it by the end of next year. Then we don't fund competitions or award shows in general. We also can't fund through this program nonprofit led projects or events. We have other nonprofit grants like project support. We just awarded a bunch of those awards. This is specifically for artists to do projects in their neighborhood. So um, if you're working with a nonprofit and you're viewing this, look at our other options. But if you're an artist, you're in the right place and this fellowship is for you.
And then we don't um, we don't allow any double dipping. So if you've already requested funds through any of our other programs, requested and received funds, um, you cannot come into this program as well. So you can't receive, let's say, a project support grant as well as a community arts fellowship grant. Now you can you can receive both the awards, but they just have to be for different projects. So um, let me restate that just so it's clear. The projects cannot overlap in two funding sources. So you can get a funds for artists grant for like your personal work. You could get a project support grant for maybe you're producing a theater show with a bunch of artists and then you could receive a community arts fellowship um, grant for a different community project. I see we have a question. Go ahead. You can come off mute or you can put it in chat either way. I don't, I don't quite hear you yet. I'll just keep talking and then whenever okay. you're ready. Oh, there you go. I hear you now. Okay. Uh, um, so I, my personal situation is I received a uh, personal artist uh, support mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the early, early uh, go round this year. Yeah. Is that too much to, because I'm in Northland and that, this is like, it's so, needed up here i will yeah. tell you i'm i'm a, i'm ready morrison may's you know the center of northland and uh, i really feel like there's uh, uh, several things i could uh i've had some ideas so yeah anyway, is that overlapping it it won't as long as um so if whatever you asked for in your funds for artists grant i assume is mostly for your personal practice as long as it isn't like exactly word for word i'm going to do this project at the northland community center and they're both exactly the same so yeah. we consider mostly funds for artists that kind of separate um bucket of money that's for your personal work and this is a little bit more for the community right okay. perfect okay thank you Okay, thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. I'm glad we have a, a member of Northland here. As you as you may have seen, that's our featured neighborhood, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, and I'll, also, I'm just uh, I, I apologize, but I uh, I have I'm on two different uh, devices here because my uh, my Mac Mini is not giving me the audio your audio, so I have the audio. Oh no. <laughs> That's okay. It's probably... That's okay. We've got you. I can hear you now. And um, thank you. Feel free thank to keep asking questions. Okay. Thank as you. As we go through. So these are the things we don't fund. Um, the next thing we'll talk a little bit about is the timeline. So our featured neighborhood this round is Northland. Um, that means that every so for all of our rounds we have named a featured neighborhood here in columbus and um in the past two years only folks who proposed um projects from that neighborhood um would receive awards or were eligible to apply in 2023 we actually opened both rounds up to all neighborhoods however in each of the featured neighborhoods we set aside um awards just for that neighborhood so there will be designated awards at both the high level the 10,000 and the low level 5,000 just for Northland applicants. Now, the Northland applicants might get more than the designated ones, um, but there's there's buckets of money saved. We do actually have a good amount to give out this round, um, upwards of $60,000. So we're very excited to see a number of, of those kind of large budget and small budget projects get awarded, especially in Northland. So then we are in the application open process. Our deadline is October 2nd at 5 p.m. All wow. of the GCAC deadlines are at 5 p.m. So I always like to highlight that because every once in a while, midnight still pops into people's head. The reason for that is we do like to offer technical support to our applicants, and we are here at 4.45 p.m. We are not here at 11.45 p.m. So, you know, put mark it on your calendar October 2nd at 5 p.m. You won't have to wait very long. We have a community jury that will meet and make the selections within a month. So you'll hear by November 1st or on November 1st. Then we're going to give you like roughly, like I said, about a year to complete complete the project. Now, it doesn't mean you couldn't complete it sooner. Um, if you need a little bit more time, we just ask that you send a note to us and let us know um, if there was a delay or, you know, maybe venue bookings, things like that. And then as all with our projects, we're just going to want to see a wrap up whenever you finished, but by next year, how'd the project go and tell us a little bit about that. So that's the timeline that we're at right now. Okay. N 
Yes, now we're going to get into the portal. You've probably seen this before. There has been a little update for everyone watching this uh, at home. Um, we have done a little facelift to our portal, so we're going to go through some screenshots just so everyone can find um, where everything is. The home page looks the same. If you've forgotten the password, um, go ahead and hit forgot password. Make sure you've got the right email address in. Um, that's usually where the most confusion with login comes in because we all have multiple email addresses. If you need Help. We actually now have a, um, a technical director who can help anyone, and that um, email address is just help at gcac.org. They can help with anything technical, and um, we're very, very pleased to have um, our new support person here. So once you're in the system, this is why it looks a little bit different. Um, the first arrow on the left hand side says my profile. We're just highlighting that because we encourage everyone at least once a year, but maybe, you know, every couple times you log in to just check to make sure your profile is up to date. That is where we know where we send you notifications. It's also where we will send tax information or updates. Um, and it's very important that everything is correct. We'll also ask what your legal name is and also how you'd like to be publicly acknowledged. So we know not everyone wants to go by their full legal name. You might have a stage name, pen name, preferred or chosen name. So we'll ask um a little bit of details on that and then this is where everybody's looking for is where's my funding opportunities where do i hit apply now that's now this little acorn on the right that says three grant and fellowship opportunities it will always tell you how many are open right now um right now when you log in you'll see three grand fellowship opportunities, because that is how many. And you'll actually write, this screenshot was taken earlier, but we also have some Columbus Arts Festival opportunities open right now too. Um, so take a look at all of the options there. Once you click on that little acorn, you will see everything that's available um, currently to apply for. So we are talking Neighborhood Arts Connection Fellowship right now. So this is where you'll hit apply. It will always say that deadline at 5 p.m. And then this is what the application, this part didn't change. If you've ever applied with us before, it's going to look very, very, very familiar. The information tab will have those guidelines that we also talked about, that PDF of those guidelines and just those basic dates that we've just gone over. And then the full application is going to ask you the application questions. We're going to ask you what neighborhood you live in. And just a reminder, you must be a resident of that neighborhood. We want you to, we're going to ask you to talk about the project. We want you to give a timeline, a, like a rough timeline. We want to ask about those participatory aspects of the project. And we're going to ask what the neighborhood means to you. So those are kind of the high level of the, the questions we're going to ask. So I always recommend for folks um, thinking about projects projects is to really think about like what what project do you think will be most impactful in your neighborhood and you don't have to have every detail not listed down by the time you apply but the more detail you can give to a committee who might be members of your neighborhood and community activists and leaders that they would understand oh I know what they're doing I know kind of roughly what the timeline is who you know what partners might be tapped or what the steps of the process might be and then, oops, oh, that's weird. I was like, I, there's all the questions. So the first question is, tell us about the project and event. So this one, I always tell folks to just be as point blank and straightforward as possible. What I find a lot of times, um, and I'm an artist myself, so I understand, is that we use a lot of colorful language to describe and talk about the value of the project. And there are times that um, we're reading this like, we don't know what the project is. Is it a visual arts exhibition? Is it dance? Is it something else? Because it's all about the heart and the soul of the project. And so we're getting a lot of the vision, but we don't actually know the logistics. So you can use bullet points or number and just tell us, hey, what are you gonna do? If I were to come, what can I expect? Or what's gonna be the steps of this project? So just an overview of um, if someone non-arts related wanted to know what this project is, they could read this and, and really understand it. Um, how are you engaging with local artists and how many will be paid? So as we said, you don't have to hire only artists in your neighborhood, although we think it would be great. We just want to know, uh, you know, about how many people are going to be involved. Is it a multidisciplinary project? Are you like, well, me and a couple of visual artists are going to be putting this together and we're tapping a musician, you know, to compose. And then um, how many people are you projecting to get paid? And don't forget to include yourself in that total. How will those community members 
actively participate in your project or event. So that's that hands-on engagement kind of process. Those folks who are not artists that are just your neighbors and friends and, and citizens in your community, how are they gonna engage with this process um, and project and event? And then what does your neighborhood mean to you? Um, you can talk about how long you've lived there or you know your connection to the neighborhood. Um, this is a little area to tell your story um, and, and why you think this is an important um, neighborhood to have a project in. And then this one um, is how will you determine if the project's successful? What is the impact you hope to have? Um, and this can be really broad. We don't have to have a lot of data or deep dive um, outcomes. We're just looking for, you know, if all is said and done, you spent all the money, you had the event, how do you know that this was successful? Is it, you know, people had connections? Is it how many people attended? Is it how many artists got paid? What, what would be a successful end of this project to you? Um, we do, and I'll send these slides out too, we do give an example of the of a kind of project that um, we've seen done, not here in Columbus, but other places. It's actually a really neat project. I sincerely hope some neighborhood does this here someday, um, but this is uh, a good example of a participatory um, arts project. They started this, I think they started in San Francisco, but it's been done all over in the Tenderloin District of the Bay Area. Um, the Tenderloin has had a um, storied reputation and a lot of uh, folks have not wanted to visit it and have some feelings about it. So they actually wanted to show a lot of neighborhood pride in the Tenderloin. So a bunch of artists got together and made postcards. They All the artists designed postcards that could be painted, um, drawn on, designed, and what they did is they had food and music and kind of a little like neighborhood party for everyone to gather and people as you can see in this gal in the le uh, bottom left hand picture colored in their a little bit about the postcard and on the back it said what do you love about the tenderloin what do you love about your neighborhood and then they mailed all the postcards to hundreds and thousands of people across different neighborhoods in san francisco so um, you might have randomly received a note and it was just about like taking pride in the neighborhood and then also connecting to um uh, helping you know other folks connect to your neighborhood and maybe change their perspective on what the tenderloin means so that was that's a neat project that's been done um across the country that can serve maybe as a little source of inspiration then this is the i will say this is the area that i get the most questions on for this program so budget um people always ask like okay there's a $5,000 award, a $10,000 award. Are we going to get partial awards? What does this mean? So here's what you can do. You can either, if you're like, I know I can do this project for $5,000 and that's what I want to go for, you would just select $5,000. If you're like, you know what, I can only do this project with $10,000, like I have a big dream and I need the full $10,000 to, to run whatever your project is, you could just pick $10,000. And if you're like, OK, I could do a smaller version of this project with 5000 or a larger version with 10000, you can actually ask, will you consider me for both? And if you do that, what we'd like you to do in this little expense area is to break out, you know, roughly this is how what I could do with 5000 and what the expenses would be for 5000. And this is what I do for 10000. So what we ask in this budget section is list the, the project expenses. We don't expect that you have any income for this, although you might. Um, so if you said like, gosh, if I got the 10000, I could also raise another 2000 uh, with GoFundMe or you know, a neighborhood business or some other source, but you don't have to. There's no match required for this. So we want you to just tell us the expenses. That's why we're not asking for the potential income. Then we want you to start, think about your project start to finish, everything that it's going to take to execute it, your venue, your marketing, your materials, any contractors, all the artists you're going to have to pay, if you need insurance for your project, if you need supplies, um, really anything that you would spend on this project. Um, we recommend you don't have to have any of the, the numbers locked down, but we're just looking for a reasonable estimate in those areas. Um, if you're saying like, I know I need a venue that's this big. It's worthwhile maybe calling a few places and finding out what the venue costs is. You don't have to reserve or make anything, but um, the more detail you have, the more the committee will have to go off of. 
And then if you plan to sell anything, tickets, merch, or you're having that, you can just um, list a little bit like, oh, we're also, we always sell t-shirts at these kinds of events. Or I think, um, you know, a CD by all of our local neighborhood artists would be something. Or we're planning, there's a little VIP area, we're planning a ticketed event to help, you know, fund another artist, whatever it is, you can list the income. It's not required, um, but if you are planning income for the project, we'd list it there. So to, to restate, you can apply for that 5,000 and just list what the project would cost 5,000. We don't give partial awards for this um, program. So if you are awarded, you will get essentially what you ask for, the 5,000 or 10,000. If you're being considered for both, it gives the committee the flexibility um, to award you one or the other, depending on you know all of the applications that are received. So um, I only I just typically say only select both if you know you could do you know some version of the project with the larger budget or the smaller budget. Um, if you're like I can do everything I'm looking to do with the five thousand, go for that. If you're like I really I could not do the project on 5,000, just pick the 10. Um, so that we give you a lot of options so that you can tell the committee, this is what I can do with all of, um, with these funds in my neighborhood. Then this is what everyone wants to know. How are these folks picked? Um, GCC is not involved in this, except we um, we manage the jury. The jury will be consisting of neighborhood advocates and um, leaders. We will have at least two to four Northland um, representatives on that um, selection process committee. We will announce those at the time of announcements. We don't announce them early because we don't want anyone to lobby the jurious for their projects, um, but you will find out who juried your project um, at the end, as well as then um, a couple of applicants of jurors that represent Columbus as a whole. Again, there will be those funds set aside for Northland projects specifically, as well as there'll be some other funds that may be Northland too, or they might include a couple other neighborhoods. So the first thing that the jury is going to look at is community engagement. Are those neighborhood residents actively involved and participating in this project? Um, are they engaging with local artists? Um, we are really looking to pay our artists here in the city of Columbus rather than maybe bringing in a big name from New York or some place. We want to um, embrace and celebrate the talent we have here. Neighborhood impact. Um, what are what are folks going to gain from this project? What about this project speaks uniquely to the neighborhood? So how does this um, project tie into the, the fabric of your neighborhood? What's uh, the creativity and innovation? What are the creative and innovative attributes of this program? Um, how does it connect to the community? We That's one of my favorite things about this. Um, this fellowship particularly is we have very few restrictions on what's eligible, which means you can let your creativity and your innovation run wild, um, which is where we know our artists really shine. And then ability to complete. We just want to make sure this is the practical side. When the jury is looking through, they're going to look at that timeline. They're going to look at that budget and they're going to say, do we think based on everything that we have in this application that this project could be executed? So if you're like, I'm going to plan a week long festival with 100 artists, we're pro they're probably going to be like, I don't think that can be done on $10,000, that kind of thing. So they're looking for, you know, if we invest these dollars, will this project happen? And then finally, we like to, um, I'm going to leave it open for questions in just a moment, but we are, we do have some upcoming workshops that are not grants related. So right now we are doing a financial wellness series. So the first one is October 10th. Um, this one, I believe is digital or hybrid. Um, it's 537 PM. It's financial wellness for artists. That's kind of a holistic view. And then there's also a retirement planning for artists, a little bit deeper dive um, that's coming up in November. There will be more workshops to be announced, but let's go ahead and pause um, and to do questions. If you email grants at gcc.org, our whole team gets it. So um, if you're not sure ever who to reach out to here at GCAC, everyone on the grants and funding team will get the, that email address. Um, but I am Mackenzie Swinehart. I am the Director of Grants Community Engagement. This is my direct phone number and my direct email as well here on the screen. I'll put it in the chat as well in case anyone needs it there. Um, and I will help you through the rest of this 
fellowship process. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and then we'll take any more questions that we might have.